And here we go. I'm going to go ahead and Windows M. And I think, okay, here we go. So to uh, do speech on demand, and what's nice about this is when you have a Braille display connected, you have to remember your screen driver drives your Braille display. So speech on demand allows me to move all over the place and do the skills that I need to do without the audio feedback. And many students actually prefer just to use the Braille display. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm using it laptop mode. And I actually suggest even if you're using a desktop with a numpad, go into laptop mode. It actually gives you both possibilities of using laptop key commands and desktop key commands. If you don't understand those different terms, don't worry about that. As we move through these uh, skills, you will understand it even more. So right now I'm gonna do caps lock space and an S. I'm in laptop mode. That means that my caps lock is also my insert key. Typically in laptops, the insert key is top right hand corner. I don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna do caps lock space and S. Full speech. And I'm on full speech. Okay, let me just move a couple more people here. Okay, I think we've got them. Okay, so what I want to do is show you first how to clean your computer. And if you've got your computer going, I want to go slowly enough so you can participate along doing this. If you get lost anywhere along the line, go ahead and just Alt F4 out of that window that we're working on. And, and then we'll go ahead and uh, you'll be able to have the recording and do it again. So what I want you to do is when I say give a command, I want you to hold that first command before you let the keyboard go on another one. We're going to do a Windows R to go to our run dialog box. So Windows R. Windows R, type the name of a program, folder, document, or internet resource, and Windows will open it for you. Open colon, percent, 10 percent, okay, cancel, browse, dot, dot, dot. And I'm gonna hit my control key, which is my hush up key. So as soon as my JAWS tells me, uh, or NVDA, or whatever screen reader you're using, that I've opened my run dialog box, I type in percent as in shift five. If you add a shift to one of the numbers, it's gonna become a symbol. So I do shift five, which is a percent, then type in T-E-M-P for our app data temp folder, and then the percent sign again. So let me tell you about the app data temp folder. Let's hit enter on it first, and then we'll talk about it. Enter. Desktop folder view list view. Not selected. Jaws 2019. 14 of 19. To move the item, say move. And down. I'm just going to hush him up. Well, he says I have 49 items, but these are the majority of folders. And in those folders, I have hundreds of other items. Now, I try to remember to empty this every day. And when I don't, of course, my computer starts to get sluggish and slow down. I immediately realize, ah, I need to empty my temp folder and it immediately picks it up. The way I explain this to kids, this is your, and if you do an Alt D, for those who are uh, uh, blind and you need to really hear where you're at, I highly always suggest doing an Alt D and you're gonna hear your username, app data, local temp. Those who are visual can look at that. This is like uh, walking through your house with dirty shoes and you're just tracking garbage. So that means anytime you open a program, anytime you do anything, it's tracking garbage. This will actually, if you clean this, it will speed up your network also. So this is huge. There's just not enough words on how huge I can tell you this is in speeding up your computer. So right now I'm gonna do a control A, okay? And I wanna do a permanent delete. So I'm gonna sit on my shift and I'm gonna hit my delete key to permanently delete this and it will bypass my recycle bin. If you just hit your delete key, it's gonna just move all the garbage to your recycle bin, still keep your, it will it still negatively impact your computer, but not as much. Are you sure you want to permanently delete these 49 items? No, delete multiple items. Yep, and it's automatically selected on yes. I also have my mouse cursor that automatically snaps to my yes button, and I'll show you how to adjust those also. So I'm hitting enter on yes. Enter. See colon backslash users backslash okay. mail backslash app data backslash local. Now backslash. I'm going to hush them up because you're always going to get meeting controls, launch meeting backslash, a file in use. File in use option. 
If it didn't automatically pop to the top, I can tell you, you want to sit to your alt and tab to that open file in use. And what you're going to do is alt A to say, do this for all my items. Because you cannot delete what you're actively using. I'm actively using my uh, JAWS, and if you see ARIA debug, that has to do with JAWS. Twain, that is uh, in your text documents, but you cannot automatically delete things you're using. So you do an Alt A for select all and Alt S to skip. So let's Alt S, delete that. 82 items from temp 33% complete. Pause the operation okay. checkbox not check. And it told me I had deleted 82 full items. And now I'm going to sit on my Alt and hit F4 to close. Alt F4 is the command to close anything. So I'm going to Alt F4. Alt F4, Malwarebytes tray okay. application. Now, quickly, so even if you're blind, these mouse commands that I'm going to be showing you are very helpful because it forces your mouse cursor to where you want it to be to quickly access something. So even if JAWS is saying, do you want yes or no? Well, if you, yeah, you can do alt Y and alt no, but typically you have to uh, listen to it to see whether you're on yes or no. If you do the snap to command, your cursor will automatically always go to your yes. So I'm going to hit my Windows key, Cortana. and just so you know, your Windows key is the key to the world. I could type in www.gmail.com right now, and it would instantly take me to Gmail. I can do a search for any item that I want, and it will actually start populating ideas of what I may want. Like if I did black bears, it's going to pop in. Oops, got to spell black correctly first. Black bears. It'll actually search a population preview. The black bears isn't available right now. Oh, I love that. That's hilarious. I am up in a rural uh, mountain. So of course my network is going to be working totally different uh, than it typically does down in, you know, life uh, down in the real world. Anyway, I'm hitting my start key again and I'm going to type in uh, mouse and it's going to populate mouse settings. I do have my JAWS on restricted and more advanced mode also, so it's not going to read absolutely everything I've got going on. So uh, it is on mouse settings. Do realize that your computer is always trying to figure out what you want to type. So it has populated a lot of other items below that. Okay. I've got change your mouse settings, ease of access mouse settings. So if you down arrow, you're going to see all the other options. What's also nice is, you know, I've got my JAWS on a slight restricted mode. It will always be on my brow display, whatever I'm on. So I'm going to hit enter on mouse settings. Enter settings. Mouse, okay. select your primary button combo box left to change the selection. Say open the box. Then move. Okay. Now I'm going to tab around to additional mouse settings. So just tab. Scroll the mouse wheel to scroll. Choose how many lines to scroll each. Scroll in active window for related settings. Additional mouse options. Link. Yep. And I'm going to hit enter on that. Additional mouse enter. settings. Mouse properties dialog. Buttons page. Switch primary and secondary. Okay. Here is the powerful dialog box. Now for sighted, uh, for low vision kids, with the new 1903 update, it actually allows you to enlarge the mouse. Oh my gosh. As long as, as large as you want. So do make sure you get your 1903 update. But right now I'm just going to show, take you through your mouse properties. Let's control tab. Buttons, pointers, pointers page, scheme combo box, left parent. Okay. I've got on my pointers page and I have no scheme right now. Do the extra large inverted. Magnified left parent, windows, black left parent, extra large right parent, left parent system, scheme right parent. Okay, that's windows, black. Windows, black left parent, large windows, black left windows, default, default left parent, extra large windows, default, 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 so on a white background, it becomes black. But when I go to black, it becomes white. Okay? And that's what inverted means. So if you're low vision, you'll be able to see it much more easily. With the newest 1903 update, uh, it will actually increase to the largest you want. My computer is not ready for that update yet. All computers are different. They, will all, they are all coming out at different months. So all my other big desktop computers have updated. So I actually have a mouse that's probably four times this size and I love it. Um, but everybody should be totally updated by Christmas time. So just know that is coming and then you're gonna have a, a lot more options here. 
that's not actually the best option yet. So back to my mouse properties, I'm gonna control pointer tab again. Page, right, right. Here it is, my pointer options. So if I tab in, it's gonna ask me enhance pointer precision. Well, that just allows me to move around more easily and you can see I can move my mouse and it really just locks me into where I wanna go. So I do have that box checked. The snap to, if you tab again, you're gonna to come to automatically move pointer to the default button in a dialog box and it will snap to your mouse cursor there all the time. The advantage of this also, of this, if you're on a page that's not totally accessible, and I've used this many times, and you can't hit your enter or do an alt Y or alt N, you can actually route your cursor and do a caps lock H to select it, which is like incredible. Oh, I take that back. You don't have to route your cursor anymore. If it already snaps to it, you can just do a caps lock H. So I take that back. That's what we used to have to do all the time route our cursor to it, caps lock eight for a left click. You do not have to do that when you have snap to. Well, there's other visual options. If you tab, you've got display pointer tails to it, tab again, hide pointer while typing. And then of course, show location of pointer, alt S, that's the big one. So I'm gonna hit my control key and you can see it vibrate. So if you have difficulties finding that mouse cursor, that is huge. Once again, any of those boxes that you select, make sure you do an Alt A to apply it. The rest of it, Control Tab, Wheel, Hardware, we don't deal with those right now. Hit Escape. Escape settings, mouse. So I just wanna go over some basics right now. Alt F4. Alt F4, malware by Straya. Now the big one in Word is actually setting up defaults. Most of the defaults, not most, all, of the defaults in Microsoft Office when you get it are not correct. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna hit my Windows key. I'm actually gonna show you how to pin something also. If you look at my taskbar, let's look at it together. Windows T is going to take me to my taskbar. Windows T, Microsoft Edge button to move for item save. Okay, left. if I do Alert Windows HDMS, 1, if I do Windows 1, that will instantaneously open that. So Windows 1, just so you can see. Windows 1. Start dash Microsoft Edge, refresh button to activate okay. Windows 1, instantaneously opens my Edge. Chamber. I'm going to Alt F4 even before Microsoft it loads. Search well, Alt already F4. loaded. Okay. Malware Let's script. go back down to our taskbar, Windows T. Windows T, Microsoft Edge button to move for light. Okay, so if you go to the right, start counting. So you know Windows 1 will open, always open Microsoft Edge until you hit your Applications key. Applications. Okay. Facebook. And you can actually unpin this if you want, but this is everything that is actually on Edge. And I can unpin it, I can get rid of it. This is called multi-million dollar uh, Escape, Microsoft. property. <laughs> That's what I always tell the kids. Yeah, because when you need to turn off JAWS, and you will, when he gets a nasty hiccup, you can instantly turn him off and then turn him back on with a hot key. So once again, Windows T. Windows T. Okay, right arrow. File Explorer button. Well, File Explorer, yes, Windows 2 will open it, but File Explorer immediately opens with Windows E. That's been a default for decades, forever, I think as long as I can remember, and I've been on computers ever since they came out with the uh, Apple II GS with Echo Boxes. Uh, so you don't necessarily need that pinned because that is a Windows E. Once again, this is valuable real estate. Right arrow again. Google Chrome button. Okay, that's Chrome, so of course, Windows 3 is instantly gonna open that. Windows 3. And I think you're getting the idea. Alert and over. Alt plus shift plus A. Google Chrome isn't your default browser. Set as default. Yeah, and it always wants to be your default. Even okay, it loaded. I don't need it. I'm going to go ahead and Alt F4. Alt F4. It. Google Chrome okay. button. You're getting the idea. So my word, what I always tell kids is count what your program is. So Windows T Windows down to taskbar. That's one, File two, button. Google Chrome three, button. Launch meeting dash zone four. Because I'm in dash zoom. One Movie Maker ten. Five, Jaws twenty nineteen button. Word button. Seven. So Word is seven. I could hit enter right now and open that. That is the long way to open a program. When we are in the classroom, speed, efficiency is everything. So Windows 7, Windows 7. is gonna open my Word. Open it dash. Open it dash Word. Okay, Word. No, I highly box. suggest, I'm just gonna hush them up. I highly suggest having the backstage view here because the kids can quickly tab to their most recent documents of anything that they have forgotten and open it. I'm gonna hit escape, you can hit escape or enter. 
Beginners typically accidentally move off their blank document. Escape will always get them into a blank document. Escape. And here we are. Beautiful. Okay. Now, immediately, if you're visual, you can see I have a navigation pane. I'm going to just teach you how to deal with those navigation panes right now. JAWS likes the most windows open. Uh, most windows open. I said that totally wrong. It likes your windows maximized. So I'm going to hit my F6 key, and then we're going to talk about what the F6 key actually does. F6. Navigation. Search document edit. Dictate okay. text. F6 moves you around to the major panes. So this is a major window pane. Your Word document's a major window pane. Your menu bar or ribbon area is a major Alert window pane. Okay, down here in your taskbar window with your fonts and how many words per minute you've typed is also a major window pane. But we're in the navigation pane over here and we want to close that. So do a control space. Control space menu move to navigate same and order, move C down one, and to close. C, leaving menus, document and it one. instantly closes your navigation pane. If I hit F6 again. F6, status bar, tool bar, status bar, okay. page number, page one to one button. Status yeah, same bar rest. down at the very bottom. The nice thing about your status bar is you can write arrow and actually hear how many words you Work have. Zero words button to activate, same press the button. I have not typed any words. Language Hebrew button to activate. Hebrew. I uh, teach, I work with a student who has Hebrew, so I've taught her how to do that also. And you can continue to move around. Let's hit F6 again. F6, upper ribbon, ribbon. Upper tab, ribbon. F6, document pane. And we're menus. back to the document pane. Now, you can actually visually look at your font box. We're gonna, I'm going to take you to your font box right now. And it's Arial or Calibri 11 multi-spacing. If I do insert F, once again, caps lock F, it tells me everything about my document. Caps lock F. 12 point, default on default, times new Roman, normal style, line spacing, colon, single, paragraph format, and colon, line left, outline level, colon, body text. Okay. Now, if you have never changed this, it's going to tell you Calibri 11 multi-spacing. Now, we need to set it up for, for school, MLA or APA format is what we use. So the first thing I want you to do is sit on your control, control key and do control D. Control D. Font colon edit plus body CS dictate text. Alt okay. plus T. Font. Now I have a lot of other text options here because I have a lot of languages. I have kids, Ukraine, Chinese, Spanish, Hebrew. And so I have added these languages. If you have not added any languages, you are not going to have all of these um, complex scripts here. So I'm just going to do Alt-F to jump right where you are at right now. Alt-F. Alt-F, font, colon, edit combo, times new Roman, to navigate, save, okay. move up, one, remove. Now, you do not have that there yet. So if you do T-I-M, it will instantly start to populate times new Roman. Because remember, your computer is trying to learn from you and it and you can train it to act a particular way so you type in times through roman and you only have to down arrow to it and then tab font style colon edit combo regular the you want table, regular size colon edit combo 12, the 12 and you want 12. once you have these you want to set the default Visually, it's at the bottom of this dialog box. This is a dialog box. It's a, a box full of lots of options. But to get down to your set as default quickly, you're going to do Alt D. So do Alt D. Alt D, font, OK button to activate, same press the button. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you have your talking software on, it's going to ask you, do you want this document only or do you want all documents based on the normal template? We'll get into more about the normal template because your normal template will get messed up and you have to know how to delete it out and how to rebuild it, which is very easy. But it will mess up and it messes up often, especially if you're copying and pasting a lot. It is easy to move in things you do not want to have on here. So right now I'm going to all A. All the all documents based on the normal document yeah. template rating. Remember, anything that you do in Word, you are affecting either positively or negatively your normal .dotm template. Just keep that in mind. It doesn't need to make total sense right now. It will as we move along and hit enter. Okay. Document one dash word. Edit. Now, what I so a lot of these commands I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the older commands because they're a lot faster. When the ribbon came along, it added a lot of more complex uh, keystrokes to it, which we don't have to use. We can use those faster commands. 
Control D was one of them. The next one is your paragraph formatting, and that's going to be Alt O and then P. The old command of O was a format, five, two, zero, and P is paragraphing. So I'm going to Alt O. Alt O, upper ribbon, ribbon, home tab, the switch pages, and, A, move left and move right, Alt and P. P, leaving menus, leaving ribbons, Alt plus G, align. Okay, so here we are in your paragraphing, and there's a lot of other options here, but we're just going to deal with your space, spacing option. You do want left aligned. Now, down at your spacing, you're actually going to see eight point and multi spacing. I'm going to need to hit Alt F a couple of times because, once again, my computer is going to be a little different because I have so many different languages on here. So I'm going to do Alt F. Alt F, right dash, Alt F after colon, alert, Daryl's iPhone has left him. Okay, now it's zero point, so let's go ahead and if it is not zero, put zero. So all I have to do is hit zero and you're going to tab one time. Line spacing colon combo box. And you're going to hit S for single, and then you tab off one time. A and a combo to okay. navigate, say move up. Now, you need to set your default, and you're going to do that with Alt D again. Alt, Alt D. D. Paragraph, OK button to activate. And it asks you once again, do you want to do it for this document or all documents based on the normal template? So Alt Alt A. All documents based on the normal enter. Dot, dot. Document one that word edited. Now. Let's talk about some formatting. What I want you to do is do this. Equal, equal sign, R-A-N-D, left parent, right parent. Left parent, right parent. And then hit enter. enter. Okay, and it instantly puts in a whole bunch of text for you. So now you can kind of get the feel of how to move around a document. Control home instantly gets you to the top of your document. So control home. Video provides a powerful way to help you prove your point. Control, of course, hushes them up. Okay, so let's actually select that paragraph so you actually know where you're at. Control shift, down arrow. Video provides a powerful way to help you. Okay, actually shows you where you're at. Let's go ahead and highlight that with a color. So we're going to clearly distinguish each one of these paragraphs. To highlight it, we're going to go to our home with all H. All H, upper ribbon, ribbon. Then hit that letter I. Font tool bar, yellow button. Okay, because highlighting, annotating is huge in class. This is the reason why we're starting with Word. And you're going to love the way it co coordinates really nicely with Docs also in Google because Google Platform is so huge in the U.S. right now. So yellow, the most common, all you have to do is left or right arrow. Right green button. Okay. Turquoise button. And if you're visual, you can actually Steel see button. the changes Dark being made. Button. Red button, alert, okay. line sports girl, violet button, and alert, line sports girl, menu, Let's go ribbon, ahead text, highlight, and color. just pick Steel a button. color. Turquoise button. Turquoise, and I'm going to hit enter on that. Leaving menus, okay. leaving ribbons, ribbon. Now, this paragraph needs to be indented. Sit on your control and hit an up arrow. Video provides a powerful way to help you. Okay, and now hit your tab one time. Alt shift F10. Alt shift alert, F10. Line sports girl, Love alert, that. Alert. Alert. Control Z. We love that. Okay, I have a raised hand here. Hold on just a second, raised hand. Go ahead and text me a question with a control H, okay? And Alert. we'll From keep moving. To to okay, so let's go ahead and hit our home key. Oh. And I have lost focus. Let's alt tab back to work. Controls to launch me zoom, clap, document one Here word. we go. Actually, let's show let me show you how to move one word at a time. I'm gonna sit on my control and I'm gonna hit left arrow. Provides a powerful way to help you prove. Okay. You help to left oh and right arrow. Okay, powerful. I can see my paragraphing has changed. Okay, let's do this one more time. Control N. Control N. Document two dash word. Print edit. Okay, and insert text with equals. equals R -A Rand -A left parent, parent right, right parent, parent and enter. enter. Okay, Control Home. Video provides a powerful way to help you prove your point when you click on my video. You. Okay, and uh, yes. <gasps> My cursors have completely turned off. I love that. I think I've changed to another language on this. Okay, let's all H. Hold H, upper ribbon, ribbon, home tab, the switch pages, a move left and move right, hold comma H. And I'm going to hit number nine. Nine, leaving menus, leaving ribbons, print edit. 
And right aligned. Okay. Control A. L O P. I've turned off something. And there we go. Lined a left. And this is how you just problem solve when something goes wrong. Okay, I want to do, oh yes, the Hebrew language. That always throws me off. Outline, level, colon, color, Body box. text. Right dash, dash, left, radio, I left, want left. to go Space, left. right to left because Hebrew, you write, oh no, Hebrew is right to left. Yep, that's a dyslexia. Left, dash, dash, right, radio, left to right. There we go. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Much better. Okay, button. Okay. All documents. There Document we go. Okay, and we're up. Uh, and things are going to happen like that, especially when you actually start getting more foreign languages on it. You're going to have, you're going to accidentally do something very, very quickly like that and get it off. You just have to problem solve and go back to what you need to do. So now when I control home, Video provides a powerful way to help. now my cursor is correct. Now I'm going to hit my tab. Alt Shift F10. Okay. And it is, it also tells you, Alt Shift F10, it tells you other options that you can do. I'm going to control shift down there to select my paragraph again. Video provides a powerful way to I'm going to hush them up. Let's do our key command to highlight this. All H and I. All H. H. Ribbon, ribbon, home, I. I. Tool bar, yellow, but I'm going to choose yellow and, and hush them up. Now let's move one one character, not one character, one word at a time. So control left Period. arrow. Document your fits. Okay. Control right arrow. Best fits your document. Okay, which is really nice for uh, moving along your document when you're editing. Now, control down arrow, not just down arrow, control down arrow is immediately going to move me to the start of my next paragraph. To make your document look professionally produced. Okay, and tab one time. Alt shift F10. Okay, once again, control shift down arrow, sit on your control shift down arrow. To make your document look professionally. Let's highlight that with Alt H I. Alt H, upper I, text highlight color table. Let's green make button. it green and enter. Leave it menus, leave it okay, I think you're getting the idea of that. Let's misspell a word. Space. This one's huge. So let's go ahead and type out C click and let's spell click with e I C K. How about that? Space auto correct colon C C. Okay. And it tells you and it gives you a buzz also. So I'm going to left Space. arrow misspell back K. into it. Q I'm going to hit my applications key. If you don't have an applications key, Shift F10 does the same thing. Applications menu, spelling sub menu, the move for items, say move down one, looking for suggestions, okay. dot, 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 available, leave it menu. And I'm going to hush them up and it automatically tells me click. Well, I can go down to my other options, but as soon as I hear click and I know that's what I want, I can hit enter. Okay. Document two dash word, edit. And of course, it gives me the dink. I've got it. It's wonderful. We also have F7. Most people know that command, F7, and I'm not going to have any errors in here because I did the equals rand. And that is an old DOS command. That's what the computer programs used to use to make sure that their uh, word processing programs were working. So that command is, what's nice about the old commands is they never go away, okay? Um, but F7 is also a very valuable one. I always tell kids, absolutely use your applications key as you're moving through, but always, always do F7 at the very end. Okay, so let's go ahead and close Word and then reopen it, and I'm going to show you how to send work directly from Word, all F4, just to practice it. And I actually have an FN key on my computer. Leave it menus, leave okay, it I just muted myself. Now, what happened here is on laptops, we have FN keys or function keys. Now, when my FN is compressed, it actually allows me to use my F keys without actually having to hold on to it. So all laptops are built a little bit differently. But my F4 key, which is what I want to do, all F4 to close, is also my mute key. So if I do not have it selected on, I automatically mute myself. Of course, all my sound goes off also. So it's a matter of learning your keyboard so you know what's going on. So now I'm hitting my FN key to turn it on automatically. So now when I Alt F4, I'm not going to mute myself or turn off my audio. I'm actually going to close my program. This is actually a big issue for a lot of kids. They'll accidentally hit their mute key and of course, they'll text me on the phone and they'll say they've lost all their audio. And I'll say, did you hit your mute key? And they're, oh, and they go check their mute key. And if they don't even know where the mute key is, I always tell them, learn where your volume up key is. 
Uh, insert escape on JAWS sometimes fixes it, but not always. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and Alt F4, and it's going to close. Alt F4, file name, video provides a powerful way to... Okay, your document's always automatically going to try to name your file for you. Well, I don't want to save this to begin with. And if I want to save it, I'm not going to be using Control S either. And I'll show you the reason why as soon as I open this back up. Now, I could tab through this, but that's the longer way, and Y when I know I don't want to save it and just get rid of it. So I'm going to do Alt-N to don't save and close. Alt -N. And it closes. Microsoft Word document. Here's document. my what? other one when I had it automatically right aligned, which is my Hebrew. You write right to left. I don't want this. I'm going to Alt-F4. Alt-F4. Nope, Microsoft. I don't want to save it, so Alt-N. Alt -N. Okay. Here we go. We know Word well, is application. Windows 7, so Windows 7. Windows 7, task bar, Here opening dash. Opening dash Word. Okay, I'm going to hit Escape Word, and get Word. out. Okay, so Work. Here's my work. So I'm going to type in my -E. name. We're going to type a heading. Okay. Enter. We want to put our teacher here. Enter. Then we put in our subject and hit Enter. Enter. We're going to automatically insert the date. Alt. N is our insert, and then D, so all N. All N, upper ribbon, ribbon, and then D. D leaving menus, leaving ribbons. Now I'm going to hush them up. I'm going to tell you, if you are writing your actual MLA APA papers, you need to go down eight times. This one, the first one, 9 slash 11 slash 2019, is absolutely fine. But I'm going to go down eight times. One, Men, two, two, three, nine, four, nine, five, nine, six, nine, seven, seven, eight. 11 September 2019. I'm going to use this one. Because when you're doing formal papers, this is the way the date needs to be. Okay? Now, 11, September, the whole name and the year 2019. This also needs to be double-spaced. So if you forget to double-space, Control-A. Denise Robinson, teacher subject. Hush him up. Control-2. Control-2. Instantly double-spaces. Down September, arrow. And I'm going to hit Enter. I need a title and I need to center it. So I'm going to do Control E. Center. Okay, I'm going to type a title and hit enter. I need to left align, Control L. Left align. Okay, if you have a teacher that actually wants you to right align your heading, uh, you can actually just Control R. I'm just going to show you the command and move it right back. Align right. Okay, I it is right. Whoops, or it, because I forgot my R. Now I'm going to control L and move left back. Line. That is how you actually do that. Now, let's say, actually, I'm going to show you how to do a heading first. We've got this visual box. Let me see if I can minimize that. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do a header. Be very clear the difference between this is a heading, your name, your teacher, your subject, and the date. And then to go up to your header, and you always need to go up to your header. You cannot get to your header unless you do this command. Once again, I'm going to give you the older command that is far faster. It's Alt V, think view, H for header. Alt V. Alt V, upper ribbon, H. ribbon, H, leave it menus, leave it okay. ribbon, dictate that. Now, there's no way I can get down to my paper. Visually, you can actually see your paper has turned gray down below. But you need to right align your header, H E A D E R, Control R for right align. Right, right. You need to type in your last name. Oh, 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 space. Now you need to insert your page number, okay? You're actually going to do Alt-I and then U. Alt-I, Alt -I, upper ribbon, then U. Leaving menus, leaving ribbons, Alt plus A, alignment, colon, combo okay. box. And this is your page number. It's going to tell you your automatic alignment is right. You can change that right here. It's a combo box. You can also tab to show number on first page because maybe it's a title page. Well, you don't want to show your number on your title page. But we, this is just a basic paper that you're going to submit to your teacher. So you, all you have to do is hit enter. And it automatically puts that in. Now, the reason why you want a header is because it does not matter if you write 50, 100, or 1,000 pages. It is automatically going to put your last name and the page number even if it's Robinson 50, Robinson 100, the page number will automatically change based on how many pages you write. At this point, when I am done, I want to hit escape twice. Escape. Okay. Escape. I'm going to control end just so you can see how cool this looks. Land. And I'm going to control 
enter to make a new page. Page two. Okay. And if I go page one, up page to, rated. there's page one, page two, page two, and you can visually see Robinson 2 there. I can, Alt V H, go back up there and see that. You can see your page number is constantly changing. Now, once I'm done with my work, I'm going to control home. Page one, then you drop. I want to email this to my teacher. I don't have to go anyplace. I don't even need to save it. It will instantly send, but it will send it as document one. So I'm going to show you how to save it. The reason why you want to use the F12 key, and you do want to use F12, because Control S, and let me just show you the reason why, Control S. Control S, file name, Denise Robinson, file name, Denise Robinson, file name. Oh, and the new update did change that. That doesn't do that on all computers now. You can save it like this, uh, and you can tab and choose your location, but I'm going to show you a better way to do that. So hit escape. escape. I'm going to hit my F12 key. Page down, page break. Oh, I have to get my FN key on to get my F12 back. See, I remember that. F12. Here we go. Now, it takes me Same to dialogue. my dialog box. What I want to tell you is you never have to leave really Alt-D or Alt-N. And I want to move around this dialog box many times just to give you a feel for the power of this dialog box. Let's say I just wanted to save it to my desktop. Well, I don't, but I want to show you how easy it is to move. The box at the very top where you actually see this PC or documents, if you're already blind, you already know that's what it's going to say. But Alt-D and listen. Alt-D, address edit combo, documents, to navigate, save, move. Okay, well, that's my default documents, but I can start to type in any of the default programs in the libraries, okay? You're talking desktop, documents, videos, pictures. Uh, if you create your own folder, you have to type the full name of it and you can go to it. But I want to go to desktop right now, so just watch. D, E, and it automatically populates my desktop. I down arrow. Desktop, desktop. And I hit enter and it opens my desktop. Okay? All okay. Now, button. if I wanted to save this file there, I would do all N. All N. File name, colon, edit combo. Okay? Drop it. And I would rename that here. Let's name it F -I -R -F -A -C -O -C. first doc. But I don't want to name it on desktop. Well, actually, maybe I will, and then I'll go back and I'll show you how to get it off your desktop. So I'm going to hit enter on this. First okay? doc, doc. And Alt S to save or it, it just enter and it closes. Text. Okay, that's one way. Let's do it again. Ready? F12, F12. again. Here we go. Save as dialog. File name colon okay. and combo first. Well, it's going to open to the last place I was, and that was desktop. I don't want to save it in desktop. Alt, Alt D. Alt D. Address edit combo. Dot, 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 okay. dot, net slash. Let's go ahead and go back to documents. D O C. It automatically populates, so I can download the documents, documents, enter and open. Okay. All open. If I actually have a folder, and I don't have many folders in this one because I save everything on OneDrive. I can Alt N. Alt N. Oh, name, I think N. I've N. got someone's audio on. Hold on, let me go and mute someone. Give me a second here, people. Okay, and there's my thumbnails. Let's find my person who is. File name colon edit combo first doc doc. Alt plus N. Okay, well. I can't locate them because I've got way too many. It's going to lie, but it'll take me too long to do that. Okay. If someone just came on and their audio is on, if you could do Alt A to turn your audio off, that would be grand. Okay, so we're back to our dialog box of Alt N. So let's do that again. Alt D, so you can see how fast it is. Alt N back. Okay. And go ahead and just name this another. Okay, and enter. And now I've got it in documents. Now let me also show you how fast it can be to find. Oh, we do have, somebody just came on and actually unmuted themselves. If you guys could mute yourself with an all A, that would be great. Okay, they may have just walked away from their computer. Yeah. Okay, so now let's go ahead and close Word and all F4. F4. And let's see how fast we can actually find our document. Hit your Windows key. Search box and I'm going to type in another. 
Another see web results. Press right to switch preview. Another dot docs. Microsoft and it Word. automatically populates for me. Now, it, it doesn't even need to be the title for the document. You can have a word in your document and it will start populating all the other ideas. And you can see below in my drop down menu, I have all these other items with the word another in it. But I want another, and I'm gonna hit enter. And by the way, that's not the way to name a document. So I'm gonna, you, uh, yeah, we'll go over that as soon as Word opens. Okay, when you label your documents, make sure it actually makes sense. So if this is an MLA paper in your English class, you're going to create an English folder, and I'll show you how to do that. And then you need to label this, okay, this is for goalball. I don't know. So you're going to name it in your, you're going to put it in your English folder. You're going to name it goalball because that's what your MLA paper is about. So actually, let's go through those steps first before I show you to email it. Ready? Let's go ahead and F12. Page down, page break. Oh, once again, my FN key needs to be on. F12. And here we go. Okay. Save now, the dialogue. File name, colon, edit, combo. I need to create an English folder. Control, shift, N. Control, shift, N. Immediately no populates right new folder. Now, I probably already do have an English, so I'm just going to do English 2. Okay. Hit enter on it. English 2. And now I've created a folder, and I'm going to hit enter and open that. Shell view. No okay. items. Match your search. Save. Item. I need to change that name. So once again, all N, file name, back down to file top name, top. and we're going to name it Goal Ball. Okay. And I hit enter or alt S and it saves it. Goal Ball. Documents. English 2. Tools. Edit. Dictate text. And that's text. how you Goal Ball. Docs. Tools. Make, make a folder Goal quickly. Navigate. Control Shift N makes that folder quickly. You name it, enter to open it, and insert and uh, enter your name with alt N. So now let's instantly send this to our teacher. So all F to file. Alt F. Backstage view. Hit the letter Z. Now this is for Office 2016, 365. It could be a slightly different. You have to find out is it all F and then H and then E and then A, which it could be. So you're just gonna have to find out. Just down arrow, listen to your hotkey on share. Mine is Z. Z. And I get a dialog box. Share. Edit. Okay. Sure. Most are actually going to be uh, where the new box comes up and you tab to your OneDrive. Mine's a little bit different. If you have the navigation pane, then you're going to tab to send as an attachment. Browse address book button to active. Share with list box. Send as attachment link. Yep, and enter on send, send as link. an attachment. And yep, I want to send a copy of this. Goalball.docs edit. Okay. 1.50 inches. And I lost focus of that, so I need to hit F6 back over. Oh, no, I didn't. If I would have, if I would have lost focus on that, I would have F6 back over. Okay, and I'm being impatient. you got to listen to that JAWS. Let's go ahead and hit D-E-N. And now I may have lost focus. So let's Alt-Tab off. Menu, meeting controls to move from item to Meeting controls, I know that's not where I want to be. Keep, yeah, I'm sitting on my alt and tabbing through. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tab one time, shift tab, lock it, I lock it in. Okay, and if you find a good idea, huh? Oops, oh, we've got someone on. Uh, Ms. Silliker, can you all A to me? Oh, oops, he didn't tell you. Thank you. Okay, that's not cool. He that's probably, okay, that's okay. Go ahead. I don't, I don't even know. He probably thought he told you, but yeah, that's not good. Well, that's okay. I'm glad you came and got me. That is not a problem. Oh, oh, oh. oh Let me go ahead and see if I can. Oh, goodness gracious, silly oh, baby. Oh, 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 yeah. Allison? Yeah. Can you mute me? Menu, video layouts to move for items, say move down one. Okay. Anyway, once you type in your two, go ahead and tap all the way down. Okay. Hey, Daryl, can you have your wife mute her uh, audio on her Zoom, please, with all A? Okay, there, there, there's technology for you. We, we like to do things like that. Anyway, we're down to our e message edit body. Go ahead hey, and hi. type in hi. Enter. 
Please attach, of course, put your name in there. Now, you can also set up your signature. That's going to be a later lesson. But at this point, all you have to do is all S and send. Beautiful. Now, what I'm going to tell you is it actually hasn't sent. Outlook is a client. Okay, so I'm going to all F4 on this. And you actually have to open Outlook. And you need to force send it on that direction. Or that program. And I've got Dragon, so you're going to see a whole lot of other programs. Okay, once you open Outlook and you hit your F9 key, it is going to force send and retrieve information. So a lot of people forget that once you send it through your Word, you still have to open Outlook in order to send that, okay? That is very crucial. Now, here in Outlook, let's just hit Outlook a little bit. You've got your, you may have one or two or more emails in here. Control Y, Control y. is our absolute go-to item. If I up arrow and left arrow, and this is the laptop I take around to training, so I don't have all of my other folders here. On my desktop, I actually have four other emails. And the, what I want to tell you about your client is a lot of people love Outlook and they, they want to use it all the time. The problem with Outlook is it is a client. You can go to any other computer and as long as you know email-based email like Gmail, you can go to any computer, sit down with it, put your talking software, a thumb drive in or your screen reader's thumb, uh, thumb drive in or start narrator and instantly start to use it. Outlook, you have to specifically set that up in your computer. Well, I've got only one here. I'm going to hit enter on my inbox. And here I am. Let's say I want to create a new file here. Let me show you how easy it is to actually attach a file this way. So I'm going to do control N. And I'm going to open it. And the biggest advantage of Outlook is you can instantaneously send from Word. So when they're in class, when the kids are in class and you've got the last few minutes, your teacher is saying, everybody hand in your work. The student can hand it in incredibly fast. Uh, and then of course, open their Outlook and just have it sent. And we set up their computers so they can actually close their lids and nothing happens. So they can actually literally be walking from class to class and the file will be sending, okay? So here we are, let's go ahead and start typing in. Now you'll notice my name instantly populates because I'm in Outlook. It will also when you're in Word, uh, but I have just started to do updates on this laptop. They're not completely done. And that's the reason why I'm having a few little hiccups on that. If you're having hiccups on your computer, just know it is because your computer needs to be updated or cleaned or both. Now, once your name starts populating, back to typing it in, I can hit enter, enter. and it instantly inserts. I'm going to tab to my subject. Change the edit, dictate. Subject edit, dictate text. Okay. Goal plus G O A L. Goal ball. A D A L L. And I'm going to tab. Now, if Goal I ball. want to attach that file, there's a couple different ways to do it. I'm going to do it with the all H A F one. So I'm going to do all H. All H. Upper ribbon. Ribbon. A F. Attach a file. F. There it is. First one, goal ball. Because what happens is, once again, your computer is always trying to learn from you. Now, if it wasn't goal ball, if it wasn't here, I could up arrow to browse. Menu, browse this PC, dot, okay? dot, dot, but I don't have to. Menus, attach file, dot, 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 list box, recent items, goal ball, goal ball. Dot, That's what I want. And I can hit enter. enter. And it instantly, so it asks me, do I want to share a link or do I want to go ahead and attach a copy? Yes, I want to attach a copy to that. And don't do, don't do that to teachers. Don't share links with teachers. Uh, they are already too busy. They're already getting, you know, 24, 30 other copies from teachers. Make it easy on them. So hit enter on attach a copy. And come on, Hold attach up. a copy. There Hold we are. All up. Up. Okay. Now, once again, it told me two commands. Yeah, I could have used enter. Once again, my computer is in update mode. I still have several more updates. It's not working flawlessly. That's not the point. 
The point is there's always more than one way to do it. I could have hit enter. Enter should have worked, but it didn't. So what I did was all A to attach a file. You've just got to listen to those other commands. Now, if you're still not totally understanding that, let me hit my alt key and point out something to visual people. Upper ribbon, ribbon, message tab, to switch pages, they move left okay, move now on. visually, you can actually see all those letters populate. F for file, H for message, N for insert, J, I for draw, P for options, O, and so on, okay? That automatically tells you what commands you can use. Now, you can also see down here, let me bring my mouse over. You can see the underline of the T, so that's Alt T. I can instantly get to two. C, there's an underline on that C. I can do Alt C just uh, to do a CC. I can come over to send, Alt S, the S of send is underlined. When you leave actually it, can combine that with the Alt key, you can instantly open anything. Okay, I'm not going to put a subject here. I could, but I'm just going to send it with all S because I know that is the hot key command. Okay, so let's quickly just go back to Word and point those little features out. And so if you're homeschooling or trying to teach your child or help your child at home when they come home from school, Let's go over these really cool options again. So hit your Alt key. Now, I have 365, so it's a little bit different. On your computer, it could easily have just the F underlined, just the H underlined, or insert. Okay, let's bring up a dialog box once again, Control D. Okay. Now, how do you know how to pop around? How can you help your child? Well, you can see Asian text. Okay, you don't have Asian text, so let me get it. Well, you might, but probably not. Font, you've got Alt-T there, font color, you've got Alt-C there, and actually your font is gonna be this one up here, Alt-F. This is another script. It's just because I have several different languages on my computer. Alt-Z will take you to size, okay? So let's go ahead and just do Alt-C. Font color left parent space automatic space, bar. document one dash word. Font oh, color left there parent we go, automatic. popped off of it. Don't you love that? Alt-C, font color picker. Yep, color picker told me that. Document one dash word. Font color left yeah, parent automatic right parent. It's not gonna do that. I left love parent, it. Right parent, underline style colon com, left, shift tab. Font back. color left parent automatic right parent button. Yeah. Font and color picker. Nope. I totally need to do an update on this. And like I said, I had already done Document many, but it pops off. You can see the little issues here, but I don't panic. I know I don't have to. If I really need the color, I could wrap my cursor and hit left click. That's way too advanced. I'm not gonna show you that right now. But you get the idea. If you know your computer is having big hiccups, don't worry about it. You, need, you know you need to do okay. an update. So I've talked about these updates a lot. How you do that? Hit your Windows key. Search box edit. Type in the, updates. Check for updates. System settings. And you've got check for updates. I'm going to tell you, you need a good internet connection if you are really, really slow. And what I'm going to also tell you is, because I am on a mountain right now, I am using my hotspot on my phone. I would never, ever uh, rely on the network up here because it's just too finicky. So I'm going to hit enter, enter. and check for updates. Okay? And so this is what you need to do also if you are in an area. Okay. And you tab over to check for updates. And I'm going to enter. And you can actually start to see it populate. Well, visually, you can already see feature update to Windows 10 version 1903. You can actually turn off your cursor, down arrow through that also, and listen to that. Mine is not ready yet because this is a, a Surface Pro. It's really fairly new. And you actually have to do a sequence of all your updates before you can do the latest. Oh, here we go. Windows Defender. So you can see it updating very, very quickly. Um, I'm actually going to tab to your history so you can understand where this is. So tab to view update history and this will show you where you're at so you know how far behind you are i've already updated to 1903 there's more pros than there are cons you need to realize there will be pros and cons with any update okay i'm going to hit enter on view enter. update history and when it opens if it decides to open because of course it's having it's just a, oh, i lost lost total focus on that don't you love that alt tab Okay, and here are all your updates. And I've also got a delay because I've got Zoom training going on. It takes an incredible amount of power to uh, run from hotspot, do the Zoom, 
do all the other background uh, programs I'm doing. So let's talk about what type of computer you will want when you actually buy one. I can tell you don't get anything less than 16 gigabytes of RAM or an i7 processor. Uh, you want something with enough power. So if you're going to be doing more advanced work, you want to be, you know, one of those people who's going to go into your STEM, you know, your science, technology, engineering, and math programs, you need a high powerful computer. So anyway, back to my view history, you can actually see all the uh, items that I'm, I'm not going to tab to all of them, but you can just tab down arrow, listen to where you're at. And you know, you just need to keep coming back to your updates. And I'm only on 1809. So, but it will not go to my 1903 until I have done all my other little updates. I'm going to Alt F4 and get out of this. Alt F4. Okay, and I'm back to Word. Document. Let's go ahead and, well, I think that's probably enough for now. So if there are any questions, you can go ahead and do an Alt A. I'm going to go ahead, if we do, well, let's do raise hands first, because if I get a whole bunch of people doing Alt A at the same time, we're going to have conflict. Let me Alt F4 out of this. Table new. And Alt F4. Address. Grab suite space. I can exit without. And I've got Alt F4 Alt on F4. this one. Edit. Okay. Okay. Share. Bye, everybody. Thank you.